All right, thanks for watching. And today I would like to find the volume of a frustrum of a cone because hopefully after watching this video, you won't be as frustrated anymore. And in particular, let's find the volume of a frustrum of a cone of height h and base radius capital R and top radius little r, where we assume the top is smaller than the bottom. And applications of this include calculating the volume of a crater of a volcano or my favorite application, calculating the volume of a caramel flan. Yummy. So, and as delicious is the method I'll present, and at the end, by the way, I'll give you a method without using calculus, but here what I want to illustrate is what's called the disk method in calculus. Because notice, if you slice this caramel flan horizontally, then the slices are disks. So in particular, what you would like to use is what's called the disk method. The disk method, and it just says the following, in order to get the volume, you calculate the area of each slice, but the slices are disks, so the area would be pi, something squared. This something we'll find very soon. But the point is given y, the radius will be called f of y. So you calculate the area of each disk, so pi f of y squared, and then you just sum those disks up or more precisely integrate everything from height 0 to height h. So integral from 0 to h, pi f of y squared dy. So all we need to do is find this mystery function and integrate it. Well, now let's find a function and you'll see it's not too bad. And by the way, I know there are different ways of placing this cone, which sometimes makes it easier. But again, here I just want to use a direct method. Because notice what's happening. At height 0, the radius is capital R. So at 0, it starts at capital R. And then the radius is shrinking and shrinking, such that at h, the radius is very small, little r. And so in particular, the equation of the function is just a line. So given y, let's find f of y. But what is the slope here? The slope is little r minus capital R over little h. But since we like positive quantities, let's write this as minus r minus little r over h. So this gives us a slope, but notice the y-intercept here is r, so the equation simply becomes f of y f of y, it's minus capital R minus little r over h times y, and plus the y-intercept, which is capital R. So all we need to do now is square this and integrate this from 0 to h. So the volume is just pi integral from 0 to h of this thing minus r minus r over h y plus capital R squared, and that's from uh, dy. Now, this is very ugly, but just a square, so let's just use a u substitution to calculate this. So, in fact, let's be super lazy and just let u be the whole thing here. So u is minus r minus r over h, y plus r. Then du, not dy, but du is minus r minus r over h, dy. But then to calculate dy, you just take the reciprocal of that. So dy, it's simply minus h over r minus r du. 
And that's precisely what we want because we want dy in terms of du. And then lastly, we just need to figure out what happens at the endpoints. So u of 0 actually becomes just the top of the line, which is r. And u of h, you see it's minus r minus r r over h times h and then plus r and then the h cancels out and you get r minus capital R plus r so you can actually show that this simplifies to little r and in fact just like our line at h we had a little r and okay and so what does the integral become so the volume is pi times the integral over a new endpoints so capital R to little r. Now, we had this whole gibberish with the square, but because of our clever substitution, this just becomes u squared. And then our dy, which now is minus h over r minus little r du. But you might not notice it, but this integral actually goes in the wrong order. It's integral from a big number to a small number. So to make this correct, we need to cancel this out with the minus. So the minus rectifies it. And what you're left with is pi, pi, or in this case, flan, okay, pi h over r minus r, and an integral from little r to capital R of u squared d. But this one is not hard to calculate because an antiderivative is one third u cubed. So what this becomes, it's pi h, if you want, over r minus r, and then one third, and then u cubed, so r cubed minus r cubed. So we have that, but then notice, I mean, maybe you notice, know maybe not, there is a beautiful formula for the difference of cubes. Because notice, we know the formula a squared minus b squared, that is a minus b times a plus b, but in general, uh, this also holds similarly in, um, for cubes, because r cubed minus r cubed that's the same thing as r minus r times r squared plus, like a pirate, r r r squared. And it turns out this is nice because it'll cancel out this volume. So we get that the volume is pi h over r minus r times r minus r. <laughs> r squared plus r r plus r squared and this cancels out and in the end and I think I forgot about the one-third and in the end what you get it's pi over 3 let me just check yeah pi over 3 h pi over 3 h times r squared plus r r plus r r, well, r squared, okay. Mm -mm. All right, and this is the volume again of the frustrum of a cone. So if you have this caramel flan, creme de caramel, I guess, with uh, big radius capital R and top radius little r and height h, then the volume becomes pi over 3h times r squared plus rr plus r squared. And now this was the part where I just used calculus. But now in the second part of this video, I want to show you that there's a method to do this that doesn't involve calculus at all. And now let me just redraw this little uh, creme caramel. Mm. So what we get is, while well, the frustrum had height h, little radius little r, capital, so big radius capital R, and here's the clever insight. Notice that this looks like a cone, except we took away the tip. Okay. So in particular, the insight is, well, to calculate the volume of this frustrum, all you do 
is you calculate the volume of the big cone and you subtract the volume of the small cone. So let's do that. So volume equals big minus small. But what is the big cone? The only issue is we don't know what this height is. So let's just call it capital H. So H is the height of the tip. And then the, it's a good tip for you to tackle uh, volume problems. So now the height of the big cone is pi over 3 times base radius, so capital R squared almost like a volume of a cylinder, so pi r squared, times the height, which here is h plus h. And the small one, it's pi over 3, times the small radius, so little r squared, times the height, which is capital H. And now the question is, how do we find this height? Well, if you look more closely at this triangle, this is little r, this is capital R, this is capital H, this is little h. Well, it should remind you of the law of similar triangles, or as they call it in French schools, Théorème de Thalès, which gives me a bit of PTSD from uh, ninth grade, but still. So what does this Théorème de Thalès say? It says that if you take the ratio of this side and this side, so little r over capital R, it's the same as taking the ratio of this side over the whole big side. So capital H over capital H plus little h. And then cross multiply. Then what you get? You get that the hr department equals to r times h plus capital H. And then HR equals RH plus RH. Quite beautiful in some sense. Um, and then you can put the H on the left hand side. So HR minus HR equals RH. And then basically H times R minus H. Sorry, uh, sorry H times R minus R equals RH. And then in the end, you can just solve for h. So capital H is Rh over R minus R. Which is interesting because it gives you sort of the same factor we found before. And so in the end, we have our capital H, Rh over R minus R. And all we need to do is plug this back into this formula. So what we get is pi over 3 r squared so pi over 3 times r squared times h plus h so r h over r minus r plus h okay? and then minus r squared times the same thing r h over r minus r well, let's just put everything under a common denominator. So let me write this here, if you'd like. So this becomes pi over 3. And then again, rh, uh, r squared. And then what we get is rh plus h times r minus r. So hr minus rh. Good, I was looking for a simplification, so here it is. This cancels out and then minus r squared rh over r minus r. And then the nice thing is there's this common factor of r minus r which comes out. So uh, again, pi over 3, 1 over r minus r. And now let's expand this out so we get r squared times hr, so h times r cubed, minus r squared times h, so h times r cubed, which kind of becomes the same thing as before. So pi over 3 
h over r minus r, and then r cubed minus little r cubed, which I would like to remind you we can factor out. So r squared plus r r plus r squared, and then this cancels out, and we get pi h over 3 times r squared plus r r plus r squared, which luckily it's the same formula as before, so this was not wrong. And so please let me know in the comments which method you like more, the one with calculus or the one without calculus. I love calculus, so I like the first one more, but you know, uh, the second one is elegant, doesn't use any calculus. All right, I hope you like this. If you want to see more math, please make sure to subscribe to my channel. Thank you very much.